Welcome to Max ECU Training Part 20. This video we're going to be taking a look at our fuel adaption feature in our Max ECU. Our fuel adaption is going to be enabling a long-term fuel trim into our closed loop fuel calculations that we've talked about and looked at in our last video. The long-term trim will allow us to have a table that we can populate, store in the background into the ECU's memory, and constantly adjust against our main VE fuel table. We can utilize this in several different ways. We can actually build out our main fuel table based on our long-term table collecting data. We can also utilize this table to go and take a look at something like our intake air correction when we have seasonal changes, or even if we're changing an elevation, what our barrel compensation is going to be doing. We can quickly expose how we need to edit those particular compensation tables based on what the long-term data is showing us. We're gonna have a lot to cover. Let's jump into this video so we can check out working with our fuel adaption. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna be taking a look at working with our fuel adaption programming feature within our Max ECUs. Our fuel adaption is gonna be an extension on the closed loop fuel correction that we talked about in our previous video. It's going to be introducing what's known as a long-term fuel trim adjustment into that closed loop routine. It is going to be allowing us to further refine our main fuel table or our fuel model as we drive around for more than maybe a few minutes. It's gonna be something that we can use kind of as a builder for the main fuel table. And we can find that it's gonna integrate, again, into that closed loop control, and we have to run closed loop control in order to run fuel adaption. Again, gonna be building upon each other. So let's break this down a little bit further so we understand exactly what's going on here. So jumping into our navigation here on the side, we're gonna go from start down here under fuel. Under fuel, we're gonna move down here under our fuel adaption. Currently, fuel adaption in my calibration here is set to disable. I actually have it turned off. So at this point, we're just running our lambda control in our closed loop fuel control, and we're running it in what's known as a short-term fuel trim adjustment. Now let's talk about that real quick just so we understand the basis of how that closed loop control is going to, 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 to work and function. We covered that in the last video, just to be a refresher on that real quick. We'll find that we have a lambda sensor or lambda reading coming in from an external wideband controller or the built-in wideband on your max ECU. This will be what the actual lambda or air fuel is registering within your exhaust. Then we're gonna be taking a look at the lambda target. That's where we want the actual target lambda to be at at any given load or RPM point. We'll find that that lambda target is coming from our lambda target table here. So as our engine load varies, as our engine RPM varies, we'll have different various amounts of lambda targets here associated uh, for that particular load and RPM. So the engine runs safe and it's going to run properly and have proper air fuel and, and proper um, combustion and again, making proper power and doing it safely. Now, by establishing what we want our target lambda to be at, we're gonna know the difference between these two. So the max ECU is gonna be taking a look at what's known as our lambda target error. The lambda target error is gonna be figuring out again, how far we're off here depending on how far we're off, it's gonna use that in the feedback to be able to make adjustments to our injector pulse width to either enrich or lean out our injector pulse width. So the lambda matches the target. So if we're below the target, if the target's 1.0 and we're below this, let's say 0.9, we're gonna be richer than target, which means that the correction here is gonna to need to take away fuel. This percentage adjustment under lambda correction A, I have one wide band, this is gonna be my, my lambda sensor A, It'll go in, in this case, it'll be able to take out that percentage of fuel and we'll find the, the pulse width will drop. Now, likewise, if we're finding that we're going in here and we're higher than our lambda target, in this case, we're 1.02 and target's 1.0, we can see it's trying to add back in here roughly 7.88% fuel. That'll increase the injector pulse width by approximately 8%, again, coming from our air and fuel modeling that we have going on between our VE fuel table and our lambda target table. So, pretty basic how it works. And again, we talked about how we can integrate that into our VE fuel tuning process, where we're going to be driving through various points of the table, looking through data logs, and always watching what our lambda correction A is going to be doing. It's going to tell us essentially what we need to make for adjustments within our main VE table so that it's going to be dialed in proper. It does take a little bit of time to build out the table, paying attention to what that correction percentage is showing you, but it will give you the exact amount or the exact changes you need to make within the VE table. Again, we've talked about all this, but just doing a quick refresher. So in this situation, we have integrated and set up our closed loop control. And now we wanna take the next step and use this long-term fuel trim adjustment. This lambda correction here, as we're finding it, this is an instantaneous change. Always looking at the difference between these two, always looking at this error, and it'll make an instantaneous change. Um, it's not going to be a long-term fuel trim. This is something that can be applied 
in a long-term type of format where if we just want to leave it in closed loop control at all times, this will allow it to constantly make those adjustments, but it won't do any kind of storage into a background memory into the ECU. That's where we can integrate the long-term fuel contr control and we can actually start to build upon what we've already established here for this short-term adjustment in our normal Lambda correction. What we're gonna do here is jump into Lambda correction here, or Lambda control. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here, and you don't wanna miss any of the videos we're gonna be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.